Okay, we're out in the shop today. Um, I had a uh, another walk scene radio that was uh, given to me that someone was going to throw away, and uh, well, basically it was uh, looks like it's been submerged. But I just wanted to go over kind of if you ever had to repair one of these walk scene radios, um, how they actually come apart. Um, they're not too bad, uh, really. There's only one uh, major item, and that's uh, an area that you actually have to desolder. Um, to get uh, to get the lower board off and you really only have to take it off you have to replace something major um, definitely if you if you change out any of the uh, the main RF ICs uh, you'll want to actually remove this board otherwise all the heat will actually soak into the heat sink and it'll be really difficult to solder if you can solder it at all um, but I'll just give you a quick overview I've already taken this radio apart um, and pretty much it's going to be trash but uh, that's only because it got submerged. Um, there's several components that are not functioning on it, and I don't think it, it's not really worth uh, a complete diagnostic and repair. Uh, but it is worth uh, showing kind of how it comes apart, how to get it back together. And uh, I'll just go through. I've, I've never actually got to the back side of these boards, uh, which is where most of the RF section is. Um, never actually even seen it online, but. Okay. Here we've got the case apart. Um, this is the actual case, uh, and you basically got a couple of controls. You got the antenna output. Um, one thing you want to be careful of in the way these come out, I've explained this on another video, but this lower board you'll actually have to to get up underneath this side and actually pry this up just a bit to get it up. Um, there is this one connector here that you need to disconnect. Um, it actually connects to this ribbon cable. Uh, you want to be real careful. Um, you see the screwdriver I have in my hand here. This is these are really handy. Um, these are non-conductive, and they're really good for actually getting in here and popping these connectors loose uh, without damaging the board or the connector. Um, just a quick overview of what I know uh, is on this board. Uh, you have the jacks here. Typically, if you have a really dirty radio um, and you're using a handset or uh, programming cable or what have you. This is kind of the area to look over. Um, I have successfully gotten these jacks or, or ones that fit these footprints. Uh, Mouser and DigiKey both have uh, both of these parts if you ever have to replace them. Um, uh, this is a the right once uh, processor for these units. Um, these are really inexpensive. Uh, one of the downsides of this is you can't reprogram the firmware which is uh, probably one of the main reasons you really don't see a lot of uh, firmware uh, modifications to these radios. Uh, I know several people have actually taken this off, um, but it's not really pin compatible with anything else out on the market. Um, this actually, I believe they do make this in a more than right once technology, uh, but I've never actually seen anybody uh, get one and actually develop on it. Uh, this is usually the problem. I've done this in a, in a prior video. Uh, the EEPROM that usually comes in these uh, will only go through very few write cycles and unfortunately the firmware uh, actually does write quite often to the, uh, to the EEPROM. Uh, on this radio, this is one that I've actually have replaced in the past um, and it worked until the radio got submerged and, and did some damage to it. Um, the rest of the board, I really have never had to mess with the other sections of the board. I, uh, some of this I really don't even know what it does. Um, but basically you have uh, you, your couple of switches on the side, or little surface mount switches. Those are replaceable. Those are pretty easy to get um, without any issue. Um, when you're pulling out the board from the uh, actual case, and this is the actual case here, um, a couple things. This is actually soldered to the board. It's way easier to actually, you'll see this sticking up through the board. It'll actually be in this area. Um, I highly recommend actually desoldering this. And then just go ahead and take the screws out to get you a little bit more room and this will actually come up. But this is a fairly tight fit. Um, you can see uh, here these are, uh, these are really tight tolerance holes that hold on these posts. Um, there are a ton of screws. Uh, Two of the uh, different ones will be the ones for these heat sinks. These are the uh, main amps here on this side of the board. 
and on the back side um, that actually mates up to here and there's a little bit of uh, um, temp grease right there on that bar. Uh, the ground um, actually connects directly through and there's actually a screw in the, each one of these that you need to remove uh, to get this out. Uh, one thing, one other thing I wanted to note, the, the this radio is actually really well put together. Um, this this part of the this edge of the board actually fits exactly flush with this. Um, and if you notice, these are kind of scalloped there, and these actually do have a uh, uh, a brass retainer. Um, let me grab one of those and kind of show you what it looks like. Uh, this is what the brass retainer looks like. Um, you can go in and just and just get a screwdriver you know you're probably gonna have to use a metal screwdriver I know I did um, and just kind of rotate these around to get them up but that board will not come out until you take these two off um, but other than that that's really the only painful thing uh, about getting one of these apart uh, now to the side that I that I haven't seen um, I've got several parts here that are kind of swollen I guess from the water damage um, and this is the mainly the RF sections really densely packed um, we have some things underneath these uh, RF shields here um, it looks like they're actually a conformal coating as well over over all of this uh, unfortunately it didn't seem to protect it from getting submerged in the water um, a lot of uh, air wound inductors over on this side uh, what I'm assuming are small RF transistors, um, but overall this is this is really tightly packed. I'm going to get a good close shot of that there, so you can get a, kind of an idea of the complexity on this side. Um, and obviously the uh, power connections actually come through here and here. This one stays with the uh, board, and this one actually does not. Again, kind of the comparison. This is kind of the the logic and display um, in your analog, and this is all RF uh, on the back side here. Okay, one thing I wanted to mention uh, just before I put this back together, I noticed uh, over here in this section, a lot of the actual components, uh, I believe those are caps, um, are kind of just placed in there. They're not even uh, they're not, uh, you know, parallel with any other parts. They're kind of placed at an angle, especially right around this area, uh, which I thought was interesting. Um, the rest of the board is fairly uh, straightforward. Uh, a couple of parts uh, look, you know, they've got a little bit of shift on them, and it looks like it might, might not be as much pick and place as uh, this, uh, this here looks like a zero ohm resistor. So maybe that's like a test point that they used and they actually drew a line underneath um, and that's typically what I do when I want to assemble a, a circuit that I want to disconnect a section and actually test it before uh, I connect it up uh, that I thought was interesting but the rest of it's uh, fairly basic um, it'd be really difficult to, to diagnose any issues uh, in the RF section obviously and a lot of these components are just are just waterlogged and they have a lot of uh, deposits on them all right, uh, we're basically going to get this back together. And like I say, this is uh, something that you want to be mindful of. Um, I've never actually seen one like this. I'm sure that they make. I've never tried to look it up. I know a lot of people have actually uh, stubbed off the inside of their antenna. And this is actually would be really easy to replace if you had that problem. Um, so, you know, if you got one of those radios laying around, uh, if, you, if you can't fix it yourself, um, pretty much anybody with a soldering iron can probably repair this for you. Um, if nothing else, especially if you've got a big pile of uh, these top radios laying around, you know, try not to throw them in the trash unless they're, uh, uh, you know, completely trash like this one and been immersed in water. Um, you know, give them to somebody, give them to ham club. Uh, they work really well as just, you know, personal radios. Uh, but, you know, get them somewhere. If nothing else, uh, you know, shoot me a message if you, if you have several of these and you want to get rid of them. Uh, let me know and I'll, I'll give you a place to send them uh, and, uh, and I'll actually try to repair a couple of them uh, 
and uh, maybe shoot a YouTube video of that. Um, but you know, these are basically disposable razors. Um, you can pick one of these up on Amazon for 30 or 40 bucks. And I've seen a lot of people uh, get rid of these uh, over little minor problems. Um, and uh, really no point in that. Anyway, we'll try to get this thing back together. I'll kind of show you how it fits. Um, the first thing, oh, you'll actually want to put this back in. Um, and the big alignment things are this battery connector that's here. Um, and you can kind of see it, it works the same as you're putting it in the case. You want to come in just ever so slight of an angle. You can kind of see here how I'm angling it and press and it'll basically go back in. Um, the way that I actually remove this, I'm not going to put all the screws in, but I'm going to kind of show you uh, what's involved here. We'll get this tacked up real quick. And ideally you would actually want to put the screws in this connector before doing this. And that's it. Uh, connecting the antenna back and then the next thing you'll want to do is actually go in and put your brass rings um, and those basically just slip back around like so you want to be real careful these are really easy to cross thread and just be gentle with them uh, once you get them started and down on there good uh, generally you can just kind of take a screwdriver slide it in a slot and just twist until you get it good and tight. Um, the, overall this is a really good design. I mean there's other radios that I've taken apart that are commercial units that don't actually have this is basically a you know a solid piece um, that that's actually actually attaching to. So that, you know that's a really good design. That's uh, mechanically sound. Um, it protects it protects the board uh, from damage when you bang on these things because when you drop it these are going to come down and hit straight on and you know it may damage this but it's way less likely to damage the board since this is mechanically connected to this um, so to reassemble um, once you get the uh, the screws back attached here your rings back on several screws go into here there's actually a different set of screws which actually holds this plate on um, they're just a little bit different shape and there's a plate that actually goes over the uh, RF shield and it kind of looks like that um, and you'll want to get that screwed back in uh, and then it's just assembling it just like you would uh, uh, on the other video that I showed I showed how to actually tear this down um, and that's basically just taking this off so basically you just reconnect this um, these components will slide back up into the uh, into the holes and just make sure you get your LED aligned. Uh, on this particular one I actually have the gasket removed. Um, the gasket is kind of interesting as well. A um, little multicolor uh, gasket arrangement um, which is pretty neat. But you can kind of tell um, you got a you know LED holder, um, you've got your uh, antenna loop so you would basically put these over and then just kind of stretch it around and there's a groove in here that this would go. Uh, one thing I've noticed if you look this this radio is well worn. Um, one thing I noticed is there's there's a bit of grit and grime on both of these corners um, which I'm sure is from use and that's kind of where the dirt kind of wants to go to and get in at. Um, so that's an area to check. I would kind of clean this off before I ever put it back on. Uh, if you're taking a part of radio that's seen some use. Okay, I hope you liked the video, and if you ever need to take one of these apart, hopefully that sheds a little bit of light on how to get it apart. Um, it was kind of nice being able to do this on one. I've never stripped one of these down that far. Um, I was kind of scared too, to be honest. Uh, I try to save all these radios that I can. Um, but it was kind of nice taking apart one that I knew was probably not worth saving. Uh, I actually didn't do any damage to it. I'll, I'll probably keep this board for spare parts and this uh, a casting piece. 
uh, and the knobs and, and, and etc. But it'll go in the spare parts bin. But it was kind of nice to uh, to be able to take one apart that I didn't have to worry about damaging. It comes apart a lot easier than I thought it would. Um, and it's definitely something, you know, any anyone with a soldering iron should be able to do. If you had to in a pinch, uh, you could actually, the easiest way to get this out, I suspect, would be to actually take these screws out and actually screw the antenna in a few turns. And that, if you gently pull on this, it would actually probably clear the lip here with this still soldered on. But I highly recommend it. It's so easy to just unsolder that. Um, I'm going to go over that just real quick just to kind of show you how, uh, how quick and easy it is. Okay, this is uh, some solder braid uh, and, you know, a good soldering iron. And if you get high quality braid, I see a lot of people trying to do this with uh, low quality stuff uh, that doesn't actually have enough flux in the braid to actually accomplish anything. It's not just the uh, the uh, braid itself, but the actual flux that's embedded in the in the braid that kind of does the work. It does the wicking action. Um, but this will go really really quick. Okay, I actually got it on that first pass, but I just did two just to make sure it's all out. You can see the void. It basically, uh, you know, wicked up all of the all of the solder material from that joint. Okay, I hope you enjoyed the disassembly video and and kind of how to put one of these things back together. This is the Waxoon KG UV D1P. Um, I hope you liked the video and thanks for watching.